Hello and welcome to the Compliance and Risk in Business webinar. My name is Rob Hughes and I'm a business advisor for Social Business Wales New Start project. So introduction to the webinar. This webinar will cover the topic of compliance and risk within a social business and we'll also look at examples of risks and how to monitor those risks within your business. So an introduction to Social Business Wales and the New Start project. The Wales Cooperative Centre was established in 1982 and we've helped to strengthen and empower Welsh communities by supporting the growth of cooperatives and social enterprises. We deliver projects that provide skills and tackle exclusion. We deliver the New Start support programme under the banner of Social Business Wales and Social Business Wales is funded by the European Regional Development Fund and Welsh Government and we are part of the Business Wales service. So what does support does the New Start programme provide? It provides you with a dedicated business advisor for one-to-one -one support, looking at visioning to ensure there's a shared vision for your business, looking at structure, advising on different legal structures based on the needs of your business, incorporation, so develop and register appropriate governing documents, Director training, so training for directors on their roles and responsibilities. Governance and engagement, so recruiting staff and volunteers and also planning for succession. A funding strategy, looking at grant, loan, crowdfunding and community shares. Compliance and risks, so highlighting any compliance issues and risks and mitigating them as best as we possibly can and also supporting you to open a bank account. So a definition of compliance. In general, compliance means conforming to a rule, such as a specification, policy, standard or law. Regulatory compliance describes the goal that enterprises aspire to achieve in their efforts to ensure that they are aware of and take steps to comply with relevant laws, policies and regulations Due to the increasing number of regulations and need for operational transparency, enterprises are increasingly adopting the use of consolidated and harmonised sets of compliance controls. This approach is used to ensure that all necessary governance requirements can be met without the unnecessary duplication of effort and activity from resources. So a definition of risk. So risk is the possibility of something bad happening. Risk involves uncertainty about the effects or implications of an activity with respect to something that has value, often focusing on negative and undesirable consequences. So what is risk management? Risk management is a process that enables a social enterprise to deal with uncertainty by taking proactive steps to protect its assets and resources. So why do we need to manage risk? Well, the benefits of risk management are it identifies risks and opportunities that have not already been considered. It effectively constrains risks to an acceptable levels, informs decisions about exploiting opportunities, and it also increases stakeholder confidence in achieving desired outcomes. So this table here shows you how to manage risk in four simple steps. So step one is to identify the risk. So look at your business and, and make a list of any risks that you can identify. The second step then is to assess those risks. And later on in this webinar, we will look at some assessment tools. And step three then is to manage those risks, put into place management tools that are able to to ensure that those risks are managed well. And the fourth step is to review and report those risks. So why should you consider compliance and risk within your business? Increased compliance demands as your business grows. It could impose an increase in legal problems, but it could also have an effect on operations and safety, and it could affect employee morale and retention. So compliance and risk equals to good governance. So as a social enterprise, you will have memorandum and articles of association that are designed in such a way that it promotes good governance, 
ensuring that you are compliance and that you are mitigating all risks within your business. The UK government business page, the link provided here gives you a lot of information on business, on guidance, and also any legal issues relating to risk and their mitigation within your business. I would suggest that this is a good link to go to and have a look at. Um, it provides you with a lot of really useful and really solid guidance. So now we're going to look at some examples of common compliance risks within business. But before we do so, we can classify compliance risks as financial risks, operational risks and regulatory risks within a business. So a common financial compliance risk could be credit card fraud in the payment card industry. Credit card fraud is a large risk for businesses today and hackers understand that while the value of the information obtained in a payment card company breach is fleeting, it does not deter them from trying this. The Payment Card Industry Security Standards Council, founded and formed by major payment brands like Visa and MasterCard, agreed to incorporate the PCI Data Security Standard, PCI DSS, into each of their security programs. Now this standard has become the best weapon against relentless hackers who will never give up on the payment card industry. The PCI DSS includes 12 core requirements for protecting cardholder data. That include the installation of firewalls, encryption of data, adoption and regular updates of antivirus programs, restriction of access to cardholder data, development and maintenance of secure systems and applications, and tracking and monitoring of all access to cardholder data. So that's one example of a, compli a financial compliance risk within your business. So a another common financial compliance risk is money laundering. Money laundering is the illegal process of concealing the origins of money obtained illegally by passing it through a complex sequence of banking transfers or commercial transactions. The overall scheme of this process returns the money to the launderer in an obscure and indirect way. The Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing Regulations 2019 govern the way companies manage high risk or irregular transfers of money. So a common operational compliance risk is the personal data breaches and theft. After two years of preparation for companies worldwide, the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, took effect. The European Parliament worked on a set of requirements that would work to harmonise data privacy laws in the interest of protecting consumers' confidentiality when making transactions. The GDPR covers data portability, data breach notification, data protection for children, the right to be forgotten, the appointment and training of a data protection officer, the easy identification and availability of data upon customer's request. This mandatory regulation comes with stiff penalties and fines for those not in full compliance, keeping companies on their toes all around the globe. Companies that are uncertain as to whether they are subject to the GDPR may wish to consult with an auditing firm for optimal risk management. And the last compliance risk we're going to look at here now is a food business compliance with the Food Safety Act 1990. Food safety is used as a scientific discipline describing handling, preparation and storage of food in ways that prevent foodborne illness. The Food Safety Act 1990, as amended, provides the framework for all food legislation in England, Wales and Scotland. The main responsibilities for all food businesses under the Act are to ensure that businesses do not include anything in food, remove anything from food, or treat food in any way which means it would be damaging to the health of people eating it. The food businesses serve or sell is of the nature, substance, or quality which consumers would expect, and also that the food is labelled, advertised, and presented in a way that is not false or misleading. Insurance in business. 
So business insurance coverage protects businesses from losses due to events that may occur during the normal course of business. There are many types of insurance for businesses, including coverage for property damage, legal liability, and employee related risks. Some common examples of insurance policies needed by business are public liability, employer's liability, professional indemnity, building and contents, business interruption, loss of earnings and income protection, and key people and directors insurance. So that list is not an exhaustive list. They are just some key examples of common compliance risks within business. At this stage, it is imperative for you to look at all risks associated with your business and look at how you can reduce them, accept them, and avoid them or even transfer them. Later on in this webinar, we are going to look at tools on how to reduce, avoid, and accept, and also assess risks within your business. There are other five types of risks, and this table here gives you a summary. Those five types are people, property, liability, income, and compliance. So let's look at people, the first one. So people within your business could become injured in the workplace. They could become, they could die from an injury, uh, they could resign, but they could also become disengaged. So these are risk areas that people could bring into your business. Let's look at the second one, property. So partial or total loss of premises due to fire or flood. Uh, theft of equipment, inventory, cash, or even information. Intellectual property could be compromised and your brand and reputation could be damaged. These are five areas of risk that you could come across within your property. Let's look at the third one, liability. So liability could look at injury to clients and general public. You could have some product liability or damage to property of others whilst you do work on other people's land or within other people's property. You may have entered into a contract and you could breach that contract, but you could also have some professional liability. Let's look at the fourth one, income, loss of any grant funding that you may have tried for, any revenue shortfalls, any fire, flood or natural disaster, which could have an effect on your income and any change in market conditions or any uncertainty within your your market conditions. These are all risks towards your income. And let's look at the final one, the fifth one, their compliance. Any laws and regulations, knowing what applies to your social enterprise, ensuring that you understand your compliancy towards any regulations and any laws. Legal responsibility that you have as an employer, the workplace health and safety that you have to put into place any human rights and also privacy of your em employees is also a key one. So that list is quite an exhaustive list of, of the five types of risks that you could overcome within your business. So some key tools to assist with assessing and managing risk in your business. The first key important starting point is to begin by assessing your risks and listing them. And look at those risks each individually and list what steps you need to become compliant. And use a RAG rating system, a red, amber, green, to signify the different color statuses of risks in accordance to their severity. Along that sort of route then, look at the production of checklists to manage risks and show due diligence. So these can be daily, weekly, and monthly checks as simple as key holder checks, a daily key holder check, or a weekly fire alarm check, or a monthly check on safety lights within, within your business property. They are all simple checks that you can put in place to show due diligence, and also showing that you're managing any risks. You can design an audit that clearly manages risks and ensure that the occurrence of the audit ensures that you are compliant. And also think about instilling a continuous risk monitoring system into your business. 
So here we have an example of a key tool, and this is a risk assessment looking at probability and impact of risks within your business. This grid allows you to look at the priority in a low, medium or high proportion, um, whether it's crit not critical, significant or fundamental to continuing operations, and whether those the probability of that risk is extremely unlikely, likely or extremely likely. This is a useful tool to be used for assessing risks. The second key tool we're looking at here is a risk register. Now on the screen here, we have an example of a governance risk register where you would identify your risks and you would analyze them by scoring the likelihood of them happening and the potential impact, giving them an initial risk score. Think about your appetite of these risks and give each one a target risk score that reflects the level of risk you'd be happy to accept. And then you would list the controls you currently have in place to reduce and control each risk. And at that point, you would rescore the likelihood and potential impact of each risk with those controls in place that would give you a residual risk score. And at that point, you would state any actions required um, with a time frame and a process for these actions to be implemented. The risk register is a, a very good tool in order to assess, control and reassess any risks that you have within your social business. Um, and, and we would advise you to use a risk register as an assessment tool. So some further reading and advice. The first link we have there is the Social Business Wales website. On that business, on that website, you will find guides for governance, good governance, and also assessing and managing risk within your business, as well as legal structures and general business planning advice. Second link we have there is Dun & Bradstreet with the risk management plan. That'll give you, that link has a lot of information on how to undertake a risk management plan within your business. The third link we have there is from Qualsys. That gives you advice on how to manage risk within your business and how to, to look at risk in more detail. The fourth link we have there is Legalo, which shows you any compliance requirements that you need within your business. And the fifth link we have there is from NCBO, which gives you a multiple risk assessment guide. It also gives you a link to the risk register that I've just put back on the screen here. Um, it allows you to download that risk register as a usable template within, within your business. And that ends the webinar today on risk and compliance. Um, if you feel you need our support, we are available here to help. Please give us a telephone on 0300 111 Have a look at our website, wales.coop forward slash social business Wales new start. And we do accept inquiries via email at spwinquiries at wales.coop.